Jeff from Deep Signal Battery San Diego. I hope you enjoyed this video. Today we're going to install into a 40 volt EasyGo TXT a Epoch lithium iron phosphate battery that is a single steel case battery at 100 amp hours and we're going to show you how to mount the brackets, where to locate the battery and connect the harness for the SOC and the remote on off switch which I think is really cool. So I've got one of the mounting brackets and you can see that there's a couple sets of holes. You can see that this side of the bracket or the hole there's a thread right there thread ready to go in so we're going to take the bolts that don't have nuts and then we're going to i have the battery on a pallet so i can get to the feet and what we're going to do is we're going to locate the bracket underneath like this and then drop those bolts in into the threads i'm going to locate this battery just kind of center on center as a test to fit inside the txt's battery compartment so i just got these on with a couple uh threads cut in i'm just going to take and do a quick little turn here just to get a little snug and then I'll get it all centered up before I use an impact or a Phillips screwdriver to get it tight. All right, let's do the other side. Perfect. Look at that. Fits right in. Okay, and what you didn't see was the bracket fitting right into this tray slot where the six volt lead acid batteries used to fit. So we see we have a spot to drill a hole here and here and lag bolt it down to the frame. I have the terminals uh, facing this direction where I have the controller uh, right here and there's a run to a switch. This is always in tow mode, just for, you know, why not? I got my DC leads right here all secured up and we'll go ahead and make the connections to the polarity put the charger, also connect that here, and then last of all, I'll connect the harness. So something you wanna look for to make sure your cart has it, otherwise you'll have to use the Epoch, which they do give you in the kit. This golf cart already has a 48 to 12 volt DC to DC converter because the headlights, the turn signals, brake lights, that operates on 12 volt uh, circuit. Then this cart already has one, and what you wanna do is look for the output, which is right here, and we should have two small and uh, I'm sorry, one, two small red, uh, one red, one black small wires. So it already has that. So this, the 48 volt will go in and 12 volt will come out, which is the out right here. So we'll go ahead and connect the 48 into the terminals of the Epoch battery. When I was looking for the cable from the controller, um, I didn't have enough room, uh, I'm sorry, enough cable to get it to the terminal. So what I did was I went into the controller compartment and I found there was some slack right here. So I was able to pull some extra cable out of there. And you can see that this golf cart does have the Navitas uh, upgraded um, speed control. And again, this is a six seater EasyGo 48 volt TXT model. Starting with a 3 16th drill bit and uh, impact, I'm going to, I'm sorry, drill. I'm gonna start making small pilot holes and then graduate to larger drill diameters to accommodate for the, uh, I believe it's an M8 bolt that will go through and connect the bracket from the battery to the frame of the EasyGo golf cart. Next, I'm gonna use a one quarter size drill bit to gradually get the hole bigger. Next, I'm gonna grab a 5 16 drill bit. Okay, so we did the 5 16 drill and the M8 bolt does fit through. It's a little tight. If you wanted to, you can go to the 3 8 and open up if you want just a little bit more play. Um, the one thing though, I, I will say, <clears throat> Epoch did send these bolts with nylocks to secure the bracket to the, to the frame. <clears throat> They're actually just a little short, not enough um, bolt to penetrate and get a good grab on the nylock. Um, and I wish, I'm sorry, I don't know the length, but these are also M8 bolts that I brought just in case. And you can see that they're just a little bit, well, they're quite a bit longer. And that's gonna give me some more room to grab some threads, put a washer down there, and be able to work with it under the uh, golf cart. Um, but you can see the difference in the bolt size there. It's just a little bit longer. If I had to guess, this might be an inch, and this is probably a two inch. Grab yourself some flat washers, and what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna drop a flat washer onto the bolt head there goes one <laughs> bolt head right there and then that'll give it a little just a little bit more purchase and then we'll send this through from the top down to the bottom
Give you a picture from the inner side. You can see we got the nylox against the frame. Not not gorilla tight, just needs to be snug. And uh, now it's time to go work on the other side. Cool, cool, we got the other side done. Now you wanna check your work. Just grab a hold of the battery, make sure it's not pivoting, rocking. It should be snug to the frame. Um, and let's move on to connecting the DC connections. The onboard charger has a perfect spot right here to live and connect it to the terminals of the battery. Got the positive DC from the golf cart connected to the uh, terminal. Grabbing all the negatives, looks like this cart is going through the mud a lot. So now is the time to grab a wireless, I'm sorry, a cordless drill with a wire. And you can see these cable ends are really dirty. And if they were um, broken or thin, I would actually cut them and uh, crimp on some new ones. But at this point, there's a lot of metal still left. Cables are flexible. I'm just going to go ahead and brush them with the wire wheel. Clean them up for a good contact. All right. Well, they've all we polished these up. They're looking much better. Um, don't forget to include the charger lead onto the negative terminal when you attach these. So again, we got the DC uh, golf cart leads on there and I could not get the plastic covers to cover up all the cables because of the spread and the, the number of cables. So you can see what I did. I found a uh, some jack, just some rubber boots to send the cables through the bottom and just cover up the terminal just for safety. Always pretend that someone's gonna be in here after you leave with metal, although they should never do that. But plan for the worst, you know? So we'll just put some covers on there and make sure that these terminals are protected. Again, I still don't have the harness connected. Again, that's the last. You could see where the harness, if the harness is installed right now, it's gonna be in the way. I recommend when you put the bolt in, use your hand and get a couple turns on it. If you send it with a socket or an impact real fast, you have a really good opportunity to cross thread the inside terminal and then that's a bummer yeah you could chase it out and redo the thread but why do that so just give it a couple turns before you go after it with a socket again i'm using a 13 millimeter deep socket uh, just some housekeeping you can see that the lugs are stacked real nice actually the terminal cover did a good job of grouping the cables together i always use the main power cable as the base closest to the terminal and work my way out to the last cable which would be the uh, 48 to 12 volt DC converter and so I guess biggest to smallest before you commit to this just go ahead and put a hand on make sure nothing is wiggly and loose these need to be secure otherwise you're gonna have some problems thanks for sticking with me this long um, you can see we're ready for the harness now the harness does have a notch on the top and not on the bottom and you can see we do have a notch right here so we're going to assume that that is the correct place to put this uh, in with this little o-ring here again once you send this and commit to it please don't try to pull this back out click 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 cool looks like a good connection yeah so we got these little guys on the sides tab C clicked now we can start building and working on the SOC meter, which is detachable right here with these two white guys. And this remote on off switch is also removable so we can mount it. Uh, people ask me all the time, how long does an installation take? Uh, I'm not gonna lie, the six seater does take longer than the uh, two seater, four seaters. I don't know why it just does. Um, before I commit to mounting the SOC meter and the on off switch, I did fire it up and you can see how these things illuminate. It's pretty, pretty cool actually, I really dig it. Um, I did turn the key on, I got power and we tried reverse, tried forward. So again, before you commit to uh, attaching the uh, this, this stuff, the SOC and the on-off meter, just do a, go ahead and do a check for functionality. So now let's find a home for these things. We're limited on the dash on this model of where we could actually drill a hole and send these guys. So we're gonna probably get a little creative. Now we're working on the uh, SOC meter and the on off power or remote power switch. Um, I was able to get the cup holder out of this golf cart of the EasyGo. I, it's a T TXT I believe, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments please. Got the, the dash cover, I'm sorry, the cup holder off. I found a path in there for the cable to come in underneath 
the body of it, the wire loom goes all the way up into the front. And now we're going to put the on off switch right here and the SOC meter right here. First started with the remote on off switch. I built, I drilled a hole for it. I'm putting the backing nut onto it. And now we're gonna go ahead and before we replace the dash, we're gonna go ahead and make our connections to the uh, harness. Got the back snapped in. Gonna go ahead and test it before we commit to it. Yep, all right, so connection is good. So I've got the SOC meter and the power switch mounted up. I've noticed I've got these exposed wires outside the loom and I'm concerned that they're gonna get crushed when I reinstall the cup holder here. So to protect the wires, you can see that I have a little piece of heat shrink cut off. Um, I decided to connect the wires so I can see the colors that go to each part side of it. And then what I'll do is I'll just put this heat shrink around the exposed wires and then give it a heat gun to protect them. Okay, so you can see we have the cup holder for the uh, on the dash here. We got the remote on off switch here and then we located the SOC meter externally. Uh, this is called a glow shift gauge mount. It's a piece of little piece of sheet metal with an angle here. I was able to screw that up in here and then send the uh, epoch gauge through it and then send a hole for the uh, telemetry cable. Anyway, I'll put a link on this uh, little device. I use these a lot when the dash doesn't lend itself to any place to locate a circular or square uh, meter like this. So it kind of worked out pretty good. It's not in the way of the uh, gas pedal and uh, I think it's pretty cool. It's got a lot of power. Oh yeah, it's doing real good. Oh, yeah. See how she up this hill. Little burnout. Uh, he's got the Navitas in here, so I don't see a fuel uh, speedometer. There's our fuel gauge. We're definitely going to start charging it up. But yeah, she does pretty good. Yeah, so to, to rate this battery for uh, design, finish, and complexity, I'd say this is a very high level battery. You could tell Epoch took a lot of time and detail in developing their state of charge meter and the remote on off switch. Um, I really like those two features the best part of this battery. Um, the finish of the battery is really good. It's a steel case battery, which if you've ever heard me before, I always prefer a lithium iron phosphate in a steel case uh, container versus an ABS plastic. Um, the complexity to, or the scale it to how hard it was to install, um, moderate to hard. Um, if you've never done one before and you're attempting this first time, you could do it, but you're going to take a, take your time. Uh, I think the biggest challenge was trying to locate where to put the state of charge meter and the on off switch, but that's cart to cart. So some carts lend themselves to having a very easy access to those back panels. Um, this particular one was not so much, but we were able to repurpose some stuff from Amazon, uh, the glow shift gauge meter and such. Um, as far as the warranty with 11 year warranty, Epoch is hard to beat. I think Trojan has an eight year warranty on their uh, steel case now. I know Allied has an eight year warranty. Nothing wrong with those batteries. Um, it's just that when people are shopping around, uh, warranty speaks a lot of volumes. Again, you have to read the warranties to read the fine print. Um, I like this battery. I, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, let us know. We're in San Diego. Take care. Bye-bye.